In this video, we're going to be discussing the dual space. So first we need to make a definition. A linear functional on the vector space Rn is a linear transformation f from Rn to R. So this is essentially just a function from Rn to R, but it also has to be linear. So it's a vector space. It's a function that respects the vector space structure of Rn and R. The dual space of Rn is the set of all linear functionals on Rn, and it's denoted Rn star. The dual space right now, we've just defined it to be a set, but it turns out that it's actually a vector space itself, which um, explains the word space in its, um, in its title. So to prove that Rn star is a vector space, we need to give it a vector space structure and then prove it satisfies the eight properties listed on page one of your book for a vector space. We won't do all of that, but I will define the vector space structure. So we need to define four things, addition, scalar multiplication, uh, negation, and the additive identity zero. So if I have f and g, two elements of r and star, and I want to define their sum, I need to tell you what they do, what their sum does to an element of Rn. So f plus g should be some linear functional, and it should do something to, to an element b of Rn. Well, there's one thing that's very clear that it could do. I could just define f plus v, g of v, to be f of v plus g of v, and that's how I'm going to define it. So now I need to define scalar multiplication. So let's assume f is an element of Rn star, v is an element of Rn, and c is some scalar. Then I need to define what the new linear functional c of f does to v. Well, similarly, it's pretty clear what I should do. I should just multiply the value that f takes on v by c. Now I need to define a zero. And zero, I need to define a zero as an element of Rn star. So it should be some linear functional, which when it when I plug in a vector from Rn, I get a real number. And when I add the linear functional zero to any other linear functional, I get the original linear functional back again. So the only thing I could do is define zero as a linear functional. So this is an element of Rn star, which I'm defining. Um, to just take any vector in Rn to zero. So this is an element of R. So then I can check that f plus zero applied to v is just equal to f of v plus zero of v, which is equal to f of v plus zero, which is just equal to f of v. So zero is an additive identity. And then finally, I need to define negation. And similarly, this is pretty clear what I should do. The negative of f should send every vector v to the negative of f of v. So to complete the proof, As an exercise, check the eight properties um, on page one of your book. So next, I want to explain a basis for the dual space. So the first thing to notice is that if I have, let's let's consider just the case of R2 star because it's simple, but also, um, also has enough detail that we can understand what's going on in general. So if I apply F to any vector X, Y, I can split the vector X, Y up into X times one, zero plus Y times zero, one. And then by linearity, I can write this as X times F of one, zero, plus y times f of 0, 1. So it seems like any linear functional is determined 
by its value on the pair one zero and zero one. And so what, what could be the, the simplest possible non-trivial linear functional? So I'm going to define E superscript one to take the vector one zero to one and the vector zero one to zero and E superscript two to take the vector one zero to zero and zero one to one. And it turns out that these form a basis for R2 star, which is dual, which, which we say is dual to the standard basis one zero, zero one. So to check that these form a basis, we need to check that they span R2 star and that they um, are linearly independent. So to check spanning, let's take this equation up here and rewrite it using E1 and E2. So notice that E1 of xy is just going to be x and E2 of xy is just going to be y. You can compute this using the same method that we used to compute the orange equation above. So then what we get by rewriting this orange equation is that f of xy is equal to f of 1, 0 times e1 of xy plus f of 0, 1 times e2 of xy. And this is enough to show that e1 and e2 span r2 star because any other element of r2 star can be written as a linear combination of e1 and e2. So I'll leave as an exercise to check that e1 and e2 are linearly independent. So in general, um, I'm going to consider the standard basis for Rn, which just consists of all uh, vectors which have a single one and the rest of the places are filled by zeros. So IE, I'm going to define E super subscript I is defined as the vector, which is all zeros, except there, sorry, there is a one in the ith place. Then I can define the basis of R2, or sorry, Rn star dual to the basis E1 through En is defined to be the set E superscript 1 through E superscript N, where E superscript J of EI is 1 if I is equal to J and 0 otherwise. This is an exact generalization of the case of R2 that we discussed above. And in fact, I didn't need to start with the standard basis. I can construct a basis for R n star using this um, red box method. That's sort of the method in the red box. Starting with any basis for R n. So I could, I didn't need to use the, um, so if I go back up here in my orange equation, I didn't need to use 1, 0, and 0, 1 to split up my vector x, y. I could have used any basis of R2. And so if I go through all of this with any basis of R2, I could construct a different basis dual to a different basis of R2. OK, so the final thing is how to visualize.
how to visualize dual space elements. So notice that if I apply E1 to say seven, three, and I apply E1 to seven, negative 19, I get the same thing, I get seven. And in general, if I apply E1 to any two points or any two vectors on the same vertical line, I'm gonna get the same thing, right? So any two vectors on this vertical line, E1 of any on this E1 of any vector on this line is gonna equal one. Um, and similarly, if I were to take E2 and draw all the lines that E, which um, draw all the horizontal lines. So I'm here, I'm only drawing, you know, some of them, but I could draw any of them. E2 is going to take any vectors, any two vectors that land on the same horizontal line to the same uh, value. And in general, let's do a more general example. So let's say F of X, Y is an element of R2, or sorry, F is an element of R2 star and f of x, y is, for example, 2x plus y. Then on any line, 2x plus y equals b, which I can rewrite y equals minus 2x plus b, f is going to be constant. So I can draw all these lines. So in this case, these are going to be lines of slope minus 2 through various points. So here's the b equals 0 line. Maybe here's the b equals 1 line. I could draw the b equals, you know, say this is b equals minus one half, and any two vectors on the same line, f will send to the same value. And so this is a way to visualize what a linear functional does on R2.